Welcome to Nomad PHP Lightning Talks. Uh, we are going to hear from Matt Parker about Selenium testing. If you have an idea for a Lightning Talk or if you are working on a talk to submit to conferences and want to test drive the talk, please send me an email. Uh, my name is Joe Ferguson. You can reach me at joe at nomadphp.com. I would love to read about your talk and have you on uh, the, the Lightning Talk. Uh, so Matt Parker is going to talk about Selenium and take it away, Matt. So good evening. Thank you very much for having me. I'm uh, there's some slides. Um, I've been spending quite a lot of time writing Selenium tests over the last few months, so I thought I'd share some of my uh, joys and pains with you. Um, I'm also based in the UK. Um, I am a small team. Uh, so tonight I'd like to talk a little bit about what Selenium is and why you might use it and how I've got things set up to, to run all those tests. Um, and mainly I'd like to talk about some of the ways that I've tried to make it a bit easier and quicker and more sensible to use. So let's dive in. So Selenium and browser automation, you have some tests in a PHP unit style and things happen in a browser and you check that the things that actually happen are what you want it to happen and your test passes and you go on to the next thing. So it's the kind of high level functional testing. And they, there's some uh, reasons to, to do it. The reasons that I'm writing these tests, there's three really. The first is to make sure stuff works across different browsers and platforms. Um, I started writing these at about the time IE11 magically came out and it was rather good timing. There's, uh, if you're thinking about upgrading your servers, it's quite a nice way to have some testing coverage for, for that kind of move. And finally, if your unit tests are not adequate, uh, having some functional tests to cover refactoring and writing unit tests also gives you some uh, a bit of comfort, perhaps. But let's just be clear, they're not unit tests. So uh, some context to how I've got things set up. Um, there's two kind of flavors of uh, Selenium. There's the IDE and there's WebDriver. The IDE is a Firefox plugin that records your actions in the browser and lets you play them back and it can output them into a PHP unit code. Um, I would suggest using the IDE for a maximum of about five minutes while you kind of work out how it works and what's going on and then write your tests by hand properly. The stuff that the IDE spits out is, is fairly fragile and not clear about the intentions of what's going on and writing it in code lets you do that a bit more. Uh, so the tests that you'll write for the, the Selenium web driver are an, a PHP unit extension I mean, you can write them in other languages as well. Um, and so mine will extend this PHP unit extension Selenium to test case. So on my desk I've got a computer that is just for running these tests. Um, it's an Ubuntu host and so that's running PHP unit and the Selenium hub. And then I've got some Linux VMs which do a kind of approximate uh, reproduction of my uh, live servers that are running the actual application and then some Windows VMs that the tests are all running in. Uh, I could also have a Linux VM or uh, whatever else there. Um, the Windows images uh, for different versions of IE are all from modern.ie which is a very good thing for Microsoft to have done. Um, so, that, so when I'm running an actual test uh, I'll start now. My arrows don't uh, show up one at a time like they should do. So you start the bottom left-hand corner. There's the console. I press enter on my PHP unit. It sends each instruction to the Selenium hub, which then relays it onto the appropriate platform and browser. The, that executes. So something then happens, and you see it all happening in your browser. Um, and then it's going to send the stuff back to PHP units uh, and hopefully at the end of that you get a little dot and a pass test and so it carries on. So that's the kind of information flow. 
Uh, I should also say briefly, uh, Mailcatcher sits in there as well on the host. Um, I'll talk a bit more about Mailcatcher uh, in a few minutes. So before your tests start, you need to set things up. The database obviously needs to be kind of clean each time, and so I just have a uh, MySQL hot copy restore, which takes a couple of seconds. That seems to work fine. Uh, slightly more complicated is actually setting the date and the time. When you log into our application that's being tested, the first thing you see is a diary. And so for the test to make sense and pass and things, everything needs to think it's 2013 when I wrote the test. So part of my setup script um, is setting, resetting the date and the time on those Linux servers. Um, it also... I also have to wangle and persuade Windows to think that the date and the time is something other than what it is, which um, is rather fiddly. I've written that up a bit, and I'm, at the end I've got a link to some other resources that describes how to do that in a bit more detail, but it's not entirely trivial. Um, and you may also need to do file system resets and things as well, because you're testing everything. So... The Selenium kind of API is a fairly unpleasant thing, I would say. You, it feels a bit like writing JavaScript 15 years ago or something, um, and that's partly because that's what's going on eventually under the hood. Um, I think so. You have all these kind of things to find elements in a DOM of a particular page, um, but then of course, if it's a select element, you have to wrap it in a call to the select method. And then if you want lots of elements, you have to do something like that. Um, so one of the first things I do to make it slightly easier to write your tests is add a couple of um, simple uh, utility methods. They're just, they're just wrapping the by CSS um, method that comes with Selenium so that you can just write CSS selectors all the time and not think about any of those other things. Um, because that's what we do in JavaScript these days and it just makes a lot more sense and takes away rather a lot of the pain. Um, I also wrap that call to select if it is in fact a select element, so I don't need to think about that either. So that kind of gets rid of half a dozen methods that I don't now need to think about. Um, and again, these code snippets I've stuck up on GitHub, which I'll link to you to at the end if you're interested. Then there's some more, slightly more interesting, perhaps helper methods that I either include in my base extension class of the Selenium 2 test, um, or I put them in traits and include them when I need them, depending on how sort of generally useful the, the helper is. So there's things like this set form values. Uh, I can just fill in a whole form in one method call, and that handles drop downs and checkboxes and different kinds of input elements. Um, and I mentioned Mailcatcher briefly before. Mailcatcher, you set your application to send the emails to Mailcatcher, which receives them and then gives you a RESTy type API to retrieve them. And there's some PAP, PHP libraries that help you do that. And so it doesn't take very much to uh, be able to grab the emails that are actually being sent by your application, pull them into your, PH, into your tests, and check that the recipients and the subject and the body of the email are all as expected. Um, our application sends out kind of mail mergey type emails, so it's really nice to be able to grab those and check that the names have ended up in the right place. So there's a couple of examples of the kind of helper methods that I use rather a lot. There's another one, uh, spin assert, which is a wait for something to happen type um, helper. So if you're testing Ajaxy type applications, in this little example, you click a submit button on the form, it sends it off, it thinks for a moment or two, and then gives you some text saying, saved, thanks. If you write this just straight in your test, then it's going to fail because it looks for the saved text before it's actually returned from the server. So this spin assert thing just um, tries that callback function uh, once a second for five seconds, and... If it passes at some point, then the test passes, and if it never passes in five seconds, then it fails. So that gives you a little bit more, um, and it's a slightly more elegant than just a sleep five or something. Um, 
so uh, Spinoza will be your friend if you have anything to do with Ajax type stuff. Um, now this is a slightly more uh, stepping back kind of comment. Thinking about what you're testing, at the beginning I said there's the, I had three different reasons for writing my tests. And one of them, particularly the kind of inadequate unit test coverage stuff, is making sure that the system is correct. So another one of the things that our application does is generate lots of management type reports, tables of figures. And what I want to know in those tests is that the figures it's churning out are correct, are what are expected. But I don't care that the little JavaScript button -y thing works. So in those cases, if, if I'm getting a table with 100 cells in it, I really don't want to write 100 lines saying check this element is this value and so on all the way through the table. I can just grab the entire text content of the table with this <coughs> element.text method, save it to a file, next time I run it compare the known good in the file to what I've returned and that text content, that text method is doing a, the same as JavaScript text content. So there's no HTML in there, you're not vulnerable to DOM changes. So, so that saves me a massive amount of time because I can check the entire table in one line. There's a directory with all the known good stuff in and files. Um, and so where that's a, a really good shortcut, I think that saved me a whole bunch of time when I realized I could do that. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's the end. Lightning has struck, um, I hope. Um, so some kind of my general reflections. Um, Refactoring your tests, pulling out helpers into traits or into a parent class, um, well worth doing. Think about the shortcuts you can take, like I just mentioned, uh, grabbing the text of a whole table or a whole page. Um, not running tests on all platforms if you don't need them. There's various things that you can, uh, the shortcuts that are reasonable to take, depending on what you're actually testing for in a particular test. Um, and my final one is a question that I don't know the answer to is when is enough tests enough? When can you feel happy that y you, you've written enough? Uh, I mean, code coverage tells you something in unit tests, at least. Um, I don't think it has very much use in at this sort of level of testing, but I don't know what does. So my only metric for feeling whether I've written enough tests, tests at the moment is my gut, but I'd be interested in knowing if anybody has something any more uh, at all more scientific um so i've bun put a bunch of stuff up on github if you're interested in any of it there's some um code samples um uh, and links to all sorts of different resources and things there questions that's yes, okay. we have one question from uh, James. Uh, he says, the functionality looks quite similar to what you might do with BHAT. What can Selenium do that BHAT can't? Um, so Selenium is, Selenium is running your tests in a browser. Uh, so you can write BHAT-style tests for Selenium. You don't have to use PHP units. Um, but but what, you're, what you're testing is... Um, whether your whether when you click on a particular element on a particular web page something happens that you expect to happen so whether you write that in selenium or um or bhat i don't think it matters too much uh, and i have seen people doing it in bhat so is that okay uh, yeah. what about mobile is a question <laughs> that omni asks <laughs> Did you not see my disclaimer? It says, don't ask me about mobile. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I have not worked this out, to be honest. Uh, so there are drivers for um, Android and iOS that, from as far as I can tell, are basically abandoned. And um, you, uh, I, So the reason I say don't ask me about mobile is that I don't know. I, I think there is some work on some new stuff, um, so some new drivers for for mobile things. I think probably the answer is go and pay Source Labs or somebody like that who do this kind of stuff um, because I think they're well set up for it. But I I haven't crossed that bridge yet and I don't quite know 
what will happen when I need to. <laughs> I'm afraid. <laughs> uh, one other question Blaine asks, uh, is Codeception like that as well, a framework that uses a lower-level tool of Selenium to do the actual browser interface? I don't know. Um, possibly. It looks right. like it. Um, sorry, don't know. No, that, that's perfectly fine. We can find that out. Um, it doesn't look like we have any other questions, so I'm going to wrap it up. Thanks a lot for Matt uh, for doing the lightning talk. If you Thank would you. like to do a lightning talk, uh, please email me, joe at nomadphp.com. And thanks to Cal for facilitating the lightning talks. Yeah. Goodbye.